Welcome to Choir Talks. This week I'm reading again in the book of 1 John, and I came across a passage that talks about a love that God hates, believe it or not, a love that God hates. Let me read it for you. Chapter 2, verse 15 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires are passing away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. All right, so let's just break this down. The love that God hates, obviously, here is love for the world. Um, The word for love here is familiar to uh, you if you have done Bible studies probably any time you've heard this Greek word before. It's agape. Uh, Agape is um, one of several words in the Greek for love, but agape particularly is is a godlike kind of love. It's a sacrificial love. It's an um, because it's sacrificial. It's an ultimate, like first place kind of love. So when you agape or love another believer with agape, you put them first. You make them uh, the first thing, and you're willing to sacrifice for them. And so what he's saying here is do not agape the world. So when you think about it that way, what this, what um, John is really saying here is that we shouldn't love the world with that ultimate kind of love, that sacri- sacrificing ourselves for uh, that. That ultimate love should be reserved for God alone. Um so he says, if anyone agape the world or anything of the world. Now, let's, let's talk about the word world here for just a second, just to make sure that we're tracking together. The word world does not mean the earth. It doesn't mean the physical planet that we live on. And it also doesn't mean the people who live here. Now, sometimes in the New Testament, you see the word world used and meaning the people of the world. Uh, for God so loved the world, for instance, in John 3.16, means all the people of the world. But here, that's not the meaning of in, in the context of this passage here. The world here means the uh, spiritual uh, system, the, uh, the system of the world that is directed by Satan. It's the anti-God system in the world that, that Satan uses to oppose God, his influence. God uses people to accomplish his perfect and good and loving will here on, on earth. But Satan also uses uh, people, even though they don't realize it, to oppose the kingdom of God. And so um, that's, that's really what he's talking about here. Don't love the, don't love the world. Uh, so if in, um, John, in John 15, Jesus says this, If we were of the world, that is Satan's system, Uh, The world would love its own, but because you are not of the world, uh, I have chosen you out of the world. This is why the world hates you. So back to our verse here. Do not love the world system that has set itself against God is what he's saying. Um, Instead, uh, if, if anyone loves that world system, then love for the Father is not in them. So here's here's a it's an either or thing. Uh, so we we're either going to give our ultimate love to the world system and the the um, culture around us that is infected by sin, or we're going to give our love to God. And so he's he's saying that there's really no room for us to do both. Um, and Paul says in in the third chapter of Philippians, he says that we shouldn't be absorbed in earthly things. And here again, he's talking about the world system here. But he says this, but our citizenship is in heaven. Um, so really, when when God saves us through the blood of Jesus, we become citizens of heaven. And, and this world and the systems that are corrupted in it uh, are not our home anymore. When I was young, I really wanted to be a scuba diver. I really wanted to go and and uh, to uh, scuba dive. I used to watch all the shows about sh- people scuba diving and and studying sharks, and that was just that's really what I wanted to do with my life. So I pursued that to some extent. When I got to college, I took a course uh, in scuba diving and uh, learned to do that. And I remember the first time I put on that scuba tank and got into a swimming pool. Uh, what an incredible feeling it was to be under the water. Uh, and just being able to, to float under there uh, for minutes on end 
breathing that air. You know, normally in that environment would, would drown you in a few minutes, and yet I could sit comfortably under there and just breathe. Um, so that's what believers are here in this world. We are, we are in this environment that, that would crush us, would drown us, but we have, um, we have the Holy Spirit of God within us, and, and so we are depending on the sustaining breath of the Holy Spirit to sustain us while we're here in the world. So a Christian stays away from the world because of what it is. It's this satanic system that, that has corrupted our society, and it sets itself up to oppose God. But we also uh, stay away from the world because of who we are, because we are God's children. If you've read the scriptures right up before this, you would see the emphasis on us as, as God's children. And so we are not children of the world. As, as we said earlier, we're citizens of heaven and we are sons of daughters of the Father. But also, we don't love the world because of what it does to us. It attracts us to live with sinful substitutes in our lives instead of the way that God intended us to live. So that's the second verse. Let's read it again. It says this, For everything in the world, and then he details that out in in three categories, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All of these come not from the Father, but from the world. All right, let's look at those real quick. The lust of the flesh, these are natural desires that we have in our body, just like hunger and thirst and sleep, and even sex. These desires are, they're God-given, and they are not wrong within themselves. But the lust of the flesh is seeking to fill those needs in an ungodly way. So hunger, for instance, is not evil, but gluttony is sin. Uh, thirst is not evil, but drunkenness is sin. Uh, sleep or rest are all necessary, but, but being lazy is sin. And sex is a special gift from God, but adultery or sex outside of marriage is a sin. Um, I think addictions uh, probably fit in here also in this category. So the lust of the flesh, seeking to fulfill the desires of our body in an unhealthy, ungodly way. What, what about lust of the eyes? Um, this is what the Ten Commandments call coveting. Um, our society knows exactly how to appeal to this part of us. Um, that's what marketing is all about. They help raise that desire in us by showing us images of people and what they have and making us want things, um, which is okay. It's okay to accumulate things, but there is a sinful uh extent of doing that, when we begin to lust after those things, when we see those things as being important and necessary for us in our lives. Um, the Bible warns us against covetousness, and, and um, so that's the second. The third is the pride of life. It's in, so important um, for um, people who are in, infected by this world culture that sets itself against God. It's really important that they measure themselves against one another. And in so doing, they, they develop the, the pride of life. You know, if somebody else has something or has done something, then I need to achieve the same thing so that people perceive me in a certain way uh, that, makes, that makes me look good or makes me look maybe better than I am. Our athletic ability or our riches, our intellect or our accomplishments, um, depending on these things is the, is the pride of life. But that kind of love does not come from the Father, he says. Um, the Father says uh, in, over and over in Scripture that he values humility. Uh, he values us as putting our pride in who he is rather than who we are. Um, here's a great quote that I ran across this week. Anything in a Christian's life that causes him to lose his enjoyment of the Father's love or his desire to do the Father's will is worldly and must be avoided. So the love of the world that doesn't come from the Father um, doesn't please him, and it puts us on the world's agenda and answering to the world's call instead of uh, the Father's call. So he says, this doesn't come from me. And then the last verse says, the world and its desires are passing away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. So the world and its desires are passing away. Um, The things that 
maybe seem so important here on earth, we've got to remember as believers that all of those are just transitory. They all come to an end. But the, the things of the Spirit, the things that we are called to do to please and honor God, those things remain forever, as do we, as he says here. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. Um, I was thinking about um, the story of Lot and the, the subtle progression that the word, te- word teaches us about what it's like to lust after the things of the world. Um, James 4.4 4 says that um, it starts with being friends with the world. Uh, James 1.7 then says that we can be spotted by the world. And then finally, uh, we can be conformed to be trying to be like the world, as Paul warns us in Romans chapter 12. So if you think about the story of Lot, the Bible says that he looked towards Sodom. It was an evil city. It was a place that he didn't need to be, but he looked toward it. And then the next time you see Lot in that scripture, it says that he pitched his tent toward it. So he began to get closer. And then finally, he lives in the city and he's become one of the leaders of the city. And then, of course, the judgment of God came on that city of Sodom. And Lot lost everything that he had. Lot himself was saved, but the consequences in his, in his life were devastating. So the consequences for us will be equally devastating if we give our love to this world system that has opposed itself to God. Um, so we should seek the eternal, not just the present. We should seek the will of God, as it says here in verse 17, and not the world's will. So we need to ask ourselves, not only um, is this thing wrong, but is this thing the will of God for me? A a grave warning here in these verses and one to to take heed to. Let me pray for you. Father, for those who have listened with me and read these scriptures with me, Father, Lord, I ask in their lives, God, that they would see your hand and see the eternal and see what is good and focus on on the things that are righteous, the things that bring honor to you. Father, that, that you would clear out of our lives the things that, uh, that don't honor you, the things that take our attention away from being who you've called us to be and doing the things that, that please you and that are kingdom work. And so, Father, just help us to be unstained and be focused on following you. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.